Good to have you with us on this Monday edition Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Uh, maybe you were glued to the tube. I was. These uh, hearings that took place in Washington, D.C. today, it was kind of a uh, cut to the chase moment in Washington. Democrats have maintained all along that the Russians were responsible for the outcome of the election. And Adam Schiff, my least favorite congressman, made these comments blaming everything on Russia. Absolutely everything. Doesn't have the proof. And that was stated by other members of the committee. But here's his take. We know a lot about the Russian operation, about the way they amplified the damage their hacking and dumping of stolen documents was causing through the use of slick propaganda like RT, Ah, the Kremlin's media arm. I must have done it. It must have been me. It must have been the news anchor, RT. I invite you to watch RT America at 8 o'clock, 8 to 8.30. Uh, Many of you do. uh, But the bottom line here is, is that this is a red herring. Play the rest of it. But there is a lot we don't know. Most important, we do not yet know. Hold it right there. There's a lot we don't know. But there's a lot of accusations flying around. Here we go. But there is a lot we don't know. Most important, we do not yet know whether the Russians have the help of U.S. citizens, including people associated with the Trump campaign. (laughs) Many of the Trump's campaign personnel, including the president himself, have ties to Russia and Russian interests. This is, of course, no crime. That's right. That's right. That's the smartest thing that Adam Schiff has ever said. It's no crime to be an international businessman. It's no crime to talk to ambassadors. It's no crime to coordinate with other countries on a number of different fronts. It's called diplomacy. The Democrats are making fools of themselves if they continue to go down this rat hole that Russia actually influenced people in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, in Michigan, and in Wisconsin, where Hillary Clinton hardly campaigned. This is all a hard-on for losing. That's what this is. That the Clintonistas out there just can't stomach the fact that Trump is president of the United States. And there is a get campaign going on. And so uh, the answers that we got today from the FBI director, first of all, there's no information to back up Trump's tweets, and now Trump's all upset about it. Here's Comey. With respect to the president's tweets about alleged wiretapping directed at him by the prior administration, I have no information that supports those tweets, and we have looked carefully inside the FBI. The Department of Justice has asked me to share with you that the answer is the same for the Department of Justice and all its components. The department has no information that supports those tweets. Okay, so the Twitter world with Donald Trump may or may not have been correct. He might have been saying, ah, the New York Times says fake news. I do fake news, too. Here's the point. There's no criminal activity in those two first stories we just did here. One on Russian involvement. They don't have anything. Number two on the tweets. They don't have anything there. But the Republicans focused on the criminal activity, which I found very interesting Trey Gowdy, I thought the congressman from South Carolina was outstanding. The Flynn question comes up. And the, as we talked on previous podcasts last week, there's this thing called incidental coverage. That when the FBI is tracking someone and listening to their phone calls and surveillancing them, uh, putting them under surveil, uh, the bottom line here is, is that they get conversations with people that they didn't expect were going to show up. But those names under the FISA law are supposed to stay in check, meaning no one should find out. So the questioning was, well, how did these leaks take place? Because there was a Washington Post story that was out there in January naming nine different people who spoke to the media on the condition of anonymity. 20 people in the NSA would have access to names caught up in incidental coverage, and the leaks threaten national security. Uh, Mr. Comey talked about this today as well. Any unauthorized disclosure of classified conversations or documents is potentially a violation of the law and a serious, serious problem. I've spent most of my career trying to figure out unauthorized disclosures, where they came from. It's very, very hard. Oftentimes, it doesn't come from the people who actually know the secrets. It comes from one hop out, people who heard about it or were told about it. 
And that's the reason so much information that reports to be accurate classified information is actually wrong in the media, because the people who heard about it didn't hear about it right. But Ooh. it is an enormous problem whenever you find information so, that is actually... So there's been an awful lot reported in the media that hasn't been accurate. Where have you heard that before? Go back and look at my previous podcast. Go back and see what I've said about Jeff Zucker at CNN and all those shoddy reporters they got. I remember Jim Shuto not long ago giving a report that it, the, the, the hacking that took place went to high Russian officials all the way to Vladimir Putin. They don't have any proof of that at all. None of that came out today. I'm just following the facts, okay? That's all I'm doing. And when there's facts out there, there's facts out there. So that really, outside of that, that was your hearing today. There's really nothing else going on. What else, what, did I miss something? Uh, you know what, Ed, there was one interesting point, and I'm sorry to break, break in on you here. Break in. Uh, cut number it's six. a break in. <laughs> cut number six today. Jackie Spear asked if Russia is an adversary, or actually, yes, they she asked if they're an adversary, and Comey and Rogers actually both kind of agree. Well, okay, let's hear that. So my first question to each of you is, is Russia our adversary? Mr. Comey? Yes. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Is, do they intend to do us harm? They intend to ensure, I believe, that they gain advantage at our expense. Director Comey? Yes, I want to be, uh, harm can have many meanings. They're an adversary, and so they want to resist us, oppose us, undermine us in lots of different ways. Okay. And, of course, the United States doesn't want to do that to anybody else. We're the most honest broker on the face of the earth, right? Look, do you want to get it on with the Russians? Do you want a, do you want a nuclear exchange with the Russians? Is that, is that what this is all about, or do you want to get along with them? Trump wants to try to find some avenue of communication where we're going to be able to resolve some differences where we can work together to defeat radical Islamic terrorism and settle down the Middle East from the terrorists. And working together with Russia is what Trump wants to do. Um, who's got the military budget? We do. The United States has a $600 billion military budget. The Russians are at $66 billion. So who carries the big stick? They have put all of their money and all their weaponry and all their monitor modernization into nuclear weapons. They're never going to have the conventional forces the United States has. Uh, so this, this is all about the military industrial complex. This is all about jobs in America. This is all about the military machine. We got to have a boogeyman. That's where we're at. Don't tell me I sold out. I'm following the facts. If you are listening to this podcast and you have information, they even said this today at the hearing, that if there's anybody out there with any information that's going to incriminate anybody about undermining this election, they want you to step forward because they're looking for facts. And there is an investigation going on, and it's been going on since last July. But right now, they don't have anything. So let's just keep going down the rat hole and forget about health care. Forget about uh, all of the things that uh, the progressives are supposed to be concerned with. The, what, what the progressives are concerned with right now is just how big a boogeyman they can make Russia out to be. That's not where the country is. Trump must have taught the Democrats a lesson in Michigan and Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana, and Pennsylvania. That's where he won the election. But, of course, Democrats can't figure that out. That's how I tie it all together. That's good for me today. Really? That's all? That's all. Unless you want to talk about Gorsuch quick. I mean, you think we're going to we're going to ignore the Gorsuch <laughs> Gorsuch is going to get confirmed. There's going to be some Democrats that are going to twist in the wind a little bit, but eventually they're going to go along with it. Democrats in red states, Joe Manchin, West Virginia, Heidi Heitkamp, North Dakota. There's two examples right there. They're going to go ahead and vote yes on on Gorsuch. Health care. There's 26 House members right now on the Republican side that aren't going to vote for it. They can afford to have 21 defect. I think that they're going to get five more Republicans. I think it's going to pass in the House. And I think that the big advantage that the Republicans have right now is that they are working with something that allegedly the American people didn't like, and that was Obamacare. The Republicans have a real advantage here is that they should know by now what the American people want when it comes to health care. The question is, are they going to have the nuts and the guts to deliver it? 
Probably not because it costs a lot of money. Okay, so a lot of people are going to be left behind. And here's a story no one's talking about. If you were to pass the health care proposal that they have right now, people from the ages of 54 to 64 are going to be hit with astronomical increases in premiums. The older people are going to pay more. Now think about that. You're a business owner and you have about 10 employees who are almost 60 years old that are thinking about uh, retirement and gosh, their health care bill is awful expensive. This is going to walk us right down the road of age discrimination in the workplace in this country, and nobody's talking about it. These high premiums for, the, for older Americans is going to really force business to discriminate against employees. You mark my words on that. Guaranteed it's going to happen. It's not a good bill. It's bad. The Republicans are screwing people. But what the advantage that they have is that someone's already tried this before. The Democrats have already tried it. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. And if the Republicans can't get their act together to make it better, it's their own damn fault. They have a chance to win over the next generation and to solidify their movement and prove that they're the answer. And I think they're going to blow it personally. And I think Trump is, is going to end up pointing a finger at the guys that don't get this thing done. He'll end up taking Air Force One into their backyard and campaign against them. Trump wants to get this done. He has no loyalty to anybody but the final deal. That's where his loyalty is right now. He wants to do a better job than Obama, and he wants to brag about it. That's where it is. Ed Schultz, News and Commentary.